Okay, I might take a second look into getting the W9. All right, good morning, guys. Um, so I didn't record yesterday, but yesterday, basically, basic recap of yesterday. We, well, I got up first thing in the morning, about 7.30, 6.30. Um, went in, made some tea. I can't remember if it was yesterday. No, it wasn't. Wednesday night. Or Wednesday Wednesday afternoon when I got to Mercer, I went and bought new tarps. Um, not that I want them. But I got them for when I need them. Um, And like I had thought when I was up in Maine, it was a lot cheaper. Uh, the tarps in Maine was going to be $970 with tax for two tarps. And uh, you know, I got the price list. So those uh, those quick binders that I had bought in last year, um, the yellow fold down handles, I bought two more of those. Except this time I didn't get the uh, three eighths half inch. I got the five sixteenths three eighths, which is nice because they're a lot lighter. So here's a little video that I did the other day. That's the two tarps and the uh, the two ratchet binders. The ratchet binders, I'm going to replace all my binders with those. Um, I'm not going to get rid of the, the 3 8 half inch. Uh, but I'm going to get rid of all my orange handles. Um, I already got two in my side box that are that are ready to be thrown away and uh, ready to be scrapped because they, they're, the threads are all messed up. Um, and then the other ones I'll, I'll just start slowly eliminating. Um, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do if I'm, if I'm just going to scrap them all or what. Um, but I'm going to replace the whole bunch with them. Uh, those are rated for 7,100 pounds, the $38 a piece. And then the tarps, $970. That's 45 on 450, 450, 495. That's $495 a tarp. At Mercer, I spent $390 a piece. So, 780 bucks. $290 in difference. So, I think I did that math right. I might have messed it up. But it don't matter. You guys got the point. You really want to do the mathematics on it? Go for it. Uh, but that's what we got. Um, now, yesterday, uh, I don't think we got out of there until about noon. 
uh, out of Mercer. Um, yeah, I booked the load like 10 o'clock and then I called them at almost 11 o'clock to find out what was going on and they were sending another email to see if we had the load or not. Like they weren't staying on top of it. That kind of annoyed me. But uh, either way, we got the load, drove the 90 miles over to the pickup. We sat at the pickup for Well, I was there for about 15 minutes, and then I got all... Well, I got dressed as soon as I got there. I got my bibs and stuff on. Uh, but about about 15 minutes after I got there, I got out. I had my V-boards on the deck. I unstrapped those, and I put them underneath, like I planned on, in the, in the well of the trailer. Uh, and then I moved all of my... Uh, all of my timbers... Um underneath as well so I got 12 timbers and the eight V boards down underneath and uh, I'll try to show you guys when I get unloaded I'm not climbing underneath there right now not in this crap uh, but hopefully it's a little bit better where we're getting unloaded and I'll show you guys how I did that um, it was a little tricky. I had to move a couple boards around and just to try to get them, because they're not all the same size boards, so I had to get them just right so that they would squeeze together and uh, nothing would slide in and out. The last thing I want is a freaking board falling out underneath there, get caught up in the axles or something. Um, man, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be a nightmare. Uh, so I, I need to, the way I'm doing it, I think I want to do, unfortunately the straps that I have aren't going to be long enough, so I think I'm going to, um, ruin two more two inch straps, and then I'll throw the ones that, that I have off to the side somewhere, but I, I'd like to, because right now I just have it over the top of it pushing pressure down. I'd like to kind of do a a uh, a bow tie so that it's it's not only pulling it down, it's squeezing it together. But we'll we'll see what happens. That that, that worked out pretty good, so we might just leave it like that. But anyway, um, we had while I was working on putting all that underneath the trailer. Uh, the guy shows up 45 minutes after, well, about f about 35 minutes after I got there and tells me that I need to go to a different building and that he had called and left and sent me a text message with the address of where I needed to go. It took him 20 minutes to send, to try to call me and send me the address, um, and then it took him another 15 minutes to come out and get me. He just sat there waiting on my on my phone, waiting on for waiting for me to get to my phone, which it, it's you know it's kind of bullshit. But what are you gonna do? Uh, so we had to go five miles down the road from there. Pulled in there, waited another 10 minutes to get loaded. Okay. Um, where was I? I had a phone call. Uh, we waited there about 10 minutes. They uh, got us checked in about 10 minutes. Five minutes later, the guy came and got me. I followed him up, and then he loaded me up right away. And uh, that didn't take much time at all. Um... And then we drove over here last night, which is uh, Hagerstown, Maryland. Uh, not at the normal pilot up off of 81. I'm on the one right down the road uh, on, off of 70. Uh, came across 68 and stuff last night. I can't stand it, but I didn't go any slower than 45 miles an hour climbing the hills, mountains. Um, and we only, I mean, we only had 15,000 pounds on, so it was pretty bad that we had to slow down at all. 
But what are you gonna do? Uh, so that's it. That's pretty much it. We had 600 and about 650 miles. I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head. Um, I already did the did a quick clip of the um, before this guy backed in of the load, so I'll show you guys that now. And uh, we're gonna hit the road. It's 190 miles to the delivery, showing ETA on the GPS as 110 this afternoon, 1310. Uh, I gave them an ETA of 1400, so we're delivering off in in a Burlington Coat Factory parking lot, as far as I understand, some new business or whatever. I think these things are used for septic tanks and stuff, but I don't know. I'll ask the guy, see what happens, if I remember anyway. Uh, after this, we're dead heading home, 300 miles. Uh, I think it's 300 miles. I gotta pay the 476. I could take the roundabout, but 476 is the uh, quickest and best way to get home. Um, we are delivering down in Marlton, New Jersey, I think is what how it said. Marlton, Marlton, <laughs> Marlton, Marlton, New Jersey, yeah. It's, it just sounds weird when you say it and look at it. Um, which is just outside of Philadelphia. Two hundred ninety-three miles home. So let's get it done. Here's our load. There's our new tarps. <laughs> so we got two straps over this front one here. One strap up and over and pulls down on the other side. And same thing over here. It was thrown from the other side up and over and pulls down here. And then this one goes up and over that way. Same thing with that back one throws up from the other side and then two over each of those ones there. There's the boards, and I just put uh, the one strap there in the front. There we go. One strap in the front, comes down over, hooks on each side, and then same thing in the back. I just put the, uh, the ratchets on opposite sides. Uh, but like I was saying, I had to uh, twist these boards around a little bit, this one especially, um, just to make it fit. 
so that it would squeeze together right. Because with that one, the other way, it wasn't as long as wide. So, anyway, that's what I did. Alright, our load is all done. So, uh, the product that we had on was pretty interesting. Um, basically, instead of having a retention pond, uh, like most businesses like this do, they had a... Um, it's basically an underground retention pond, sort of. So just as those dome looking things had on my truck, they interlocked into each other. Uh, he said they create 16 rows. Basically, they got a big gigantic hole out here in the parking lot. He said they're going to dump 9 inches of stone. And then they're going to put the felt, uh, I know there's another name, but they're going to put the felt over top of the stone and then they're going to interlock these chambers and they're going to make 16 chambers and then they're going to put, cover them with, with stone. Uh, he said it's going to be a foot above the plastic there of stone and then they'll put dirt over top of that and then they'll put the blacktop back on top. And basically all the storm drains and everything will go down into that and then as it gets full it'll leak out and it'll go down into the streams and stuff that it already does. Uh, it's just basically stopping from everything getting flooded and it's just somewhere for the water to run until it goes where it goes. So anyway I that's why one of one of the reasons I really enjoy doing flatbed because I get to uh, find all this neat stuff out and Pretty cool experience learning everything like that. Uh, same place I used to pick. I picked up actually my very first load is where I picked up is uh, from the same company that I got this from. Same location too. I just didn't. They have like four or five different locations in the same city, uh, but I just picked up at two of the other locations my for, for my first load. Uh, but that when I picked them up the first time, those were for septic tanks. So. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, anyway, we are 293 miles from home and gonna get there as soon as possible. I got another four minutes and I'm out of here. So, I think that's it. There's that hole. All the things I just delivered over there.